Hello, this is Janis Kalofoyas and I would like to present to you some recent work with Pascal Velke and Hilles Vakem on the structural similarity random walk kernel. In our work we are treating the comparison of graphs. This can come from many applications and have many different tasks to solve like classification, regression or dimensionality reduction just to name a few. These are all methods that are well treated by a wide arsenal of machine learning tools and now we would like to apply this, inf this knowledge to the case of graphs. Unfortunately, most of these methods work directly on vector data, which is not the case when it comes to graphs. A direct application is therefore not feasible. Luckily, we can bridge the two worlds by using the so-called kernel trick. This involves using a kernel to assess the similarity of two graphs in a way that is accessible by these methods in our machine learning toolset. The kernels assess the similarity of two graphs in a way similar to an inner product. They work as follows. They come with a well-behaving space in which an inner product is defined and a mapping function that can send graphs onto this space. We could therefore compare the graphs by first mapping them on this well-behaving space and then simply taking the inner product of the points to which we just mapped them. This is essentially one of the definitions that one could give to a kernel and it works in a very good way with a wide variety of machine learning applications. From now on, we will focus on a special family of graph kernels, the random walk kernels. These ones work by counting walks between graphs which can be seen as sequences of vertices as long as there is an edge between them. In a more general question, we are starting with a combination of vertices as initial positions and we are asking how many ways can we reach the other vertices of the graph by, let's say, a one-step walk. Assume that we are starting from vertices 1 and 3, we can compute this exact number by multiplying the adjacency of the matrix of uh, the graph with this initial position. Indeed, to reach the vertex 2, we compute that this can happen in two ways from initial positions 1 and 2, 1 and 3, and the same happens for vertex 4. Having this, we can also extend to a k-step work, which simply amounts to taking the kth power of the JCC matrix. But knowing how to, perform, how to perform this calculation, how do we apply this to more than one graphs? In this case, we first can assume that there is an available matching between the vertices of one graph and the other, and using this information, we can create an alignment graph, which would consist of super nodes, where a part of them includes a vertex of one graph, and a part of them includes the corresponding vertex from the other graph, as seen by our alignment. We also allow edges in these super nodes that correspond to having an equivalent edge in the first graph and in the second. If such, a vertex, uh, if such an edge does not exist, then this also doesn't exist in the corresponding edges of the, adjacent, of the alignment graph. We can now perform a walk on this alignment graph, which would guarantee that an equivalent walk would exist in both other graphs. This gives the concept of a simultaneous walk and is a good measure of how close these two graphs were. But how can we treat the fact that these alignments are rarely available? In the case of vanilla random works, the solution comes by taking into consideration all possible such alignments, which gives rise to the direct product graph. This has one supernode for each combination of vertices of the original uh, graphs and can be computed as the adjacency matrix that arises from the Kronecker product between the two original matrices, adjacency matrices. But what do we do now if the vertices are not all similar, say if they have some labels? We observe that this labeling is also inducing a labeling on the alignments themselves as expressed in the supernodes of the direct product graph. And we can now ask if all of these alignments are equally good. We are starting from the premise that the similar vertices either do not contribute to a similarity or they could be noisy and should not contribute to it. We therefore seek to match only the similar vertices of a graph. 
Consider, for example, we have two chemicals labeled with the atoms in each position and should make it clear that same labels indicate similar vertices. Nevertheless, it's not clear how to treat if there is no oxygen, for example, in one of the two graphs or how close a kernel, uh, how close a label of carbon would be to a label of hydrogen. In other cases, such labels do not exist whatsoever. We therefore seek a vertex labeling which is structurally aware, fast and can give labels that can compare easily between each other, indicating similar vertices. One solution is the core decomposition of the graph. In this decomposition, we are trying to find k codes which are defined as maximal subgraphs whose vertices have a degree at least k within the same subgraph. In this case, consider for example these highlighted vertices which all have at least four other edges to vertices of the same subgraph. If we also ensure that this is maximal, taking the other vertices with the same property, we have by definition the four core of the graph. This is also part of the three core which contains all vertices having at least three edges to the same subgraph and contains also the four core as its and superset. In this way we can define this hierarchy of cores and by extension define a partition of the vertices as follows. These vertices are assigned a core number equal to the highest core to which they belong. In this case, for example, the blue nodes have a corners of 2, or these ones have corners of 4, as the former ones belong to at most the 2 core and the latter ones to also the 4 core. This decomposition is very fast and the given labels are very uh, appealing because similar values of labels indicate similar corner structure. We therefore propose to use a bounded support uh, index kernel on the vertices that we're extracting, for example the triangular one on the differences of vertex labels. This is well applicable to corners because the latter is an integer value property and also close values indicate similar structure of vertices. So, using the similarity measure on uh, vertices, how does this use a goodness of alignment? Remember that we want to count similar works, and if we have no labels in the original graphs, we can simply label them using the code decomposition. This induces a similarity on the alignment of um, a degree that is proportional to how similar the labels were. Going back to our kernel, we can see that there is a property, the uh, bandwidth of the kernel, or delta, which tunes the strictness of this alignment. Indeed, depending on this parameter, delta, we can see that when set to high, we can recreate the conditions of the vanilla random walk, which of course is too loose. On the other extreme, if we use a very small value, we're recreating older works which are, however, too strict as they only allow the, the exact equal uh, labels of the vertices. In our work, we also allow an adaptive way to not only incorporate the pre-existing uh, methods, but also allow a smooth increase of the amount of alignments that we are uh, allowing by increasing the value to an arbitrary way until we reach the optimal. Now let's see how we combine the previous components to the final value of the random walk similarity. For each number of steps in the walk and weighted by a way that um, ensures convergence, we are counting all walks from each vertex to every other and this gives us the final value. Now, depending on the weights that we're going to use, two particular uh, interesting cases arise, the geometric and the exponential kernel. Importantly, they can both be computed as matrix vector operations with the adjacency matrix of our aligned, uh, of our aligned graph. What now remains is to show how these matrix vector operations can be performed efficiently. To this end, we introduce a lemma that decomposes the contribution of its graph 
and uses the underlying block structure that is arising by the grouping of the vertices becoming possible through the specific use of the core values that we're using. Also exploiting the bounding support, we reduce the computational complexity uh, significantly. In our results, we show that when comparing Susan with the vanilla random walks, we are remaining better or comparable. Similarly, when we take into consideration state-of-the-art methods, for example, the uh, graph kernel of Wasserstein by Spalio Lehmann, alternative uses of uh, core uh, decomposition are also considered. And finally, we demonstrate that also within our framework of Susan, we can incorporate other labels here, the vertex degree. Importantly, the timing of our method can be more efficient when compared to a naive implementation using the observation of the block structure and the lemma that we just mentioned. This improvement is also partially attributed to a faster convergence rate due to the smoothness that our limited bandwidth induces when it comes to the geometric kernel. To conclude, we study random walk graph kernels, each taking into consideration the weighted vertex alignment. We propose to use coolness as a structurally aware vertex label, and using this, we show that an intuitive vertex similarity is introduced on the alignments of the direct product graph. We also use a bounded support, which a bound support kernel over the corners, which gives a freedom to cut off some non-necessary um, alignments. Essentially, with our work, we close the gap between too loose or too strict alignment constraints, and we show that we have competitive classification accuracy for certain datasets, while our implementation is efficient for the practical variants of geometric and exponential kernels. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions.